So Pornhub's parent company, MindGeek, who are rebranding themselves to ALO because they're trying to give themselves a PR facelift, because obviously a porn company needs good PR, are in a spot of bother because it turns out that a Project Veritas-style undercover sting operation, you know, the kind where they get pretty young girls to go on dates with executives who post their jobs on LinkedIn and have a bit of a blabbermouth problem and they just admit to all the horrible criminal stuff they do on dates. They got subjected to one of those and they admitted that they know that there are children and human trafficking victims on their platform and that they don't remove it because it makes too much money. Huh. Yeah, so some of the most horrible stuff imaginable. And I understand that as soon as I talk about this topic, there are going to be certain people in the YouTube audience that get upset, but I think that this should be a, a fairly non-controversial issue that these companies are evil, that they're trying to profit off of the suffering of people, and that you probably shouldn't risk watching that kind of stuff if you don't know who's in it. I know that's a controversial opinion, but have fun YouTube comments. If you want more controversial takes on this particular topic, about a year ago now, Josh and I, as part of his contemplation series, did a debate, actually, on the ethics and potential legality of the porn industry. I was very anti. Josh was tepidly because of libertarian principles saying, even though I think it's gross and weird, I don't think we can crack down on it. I think there are certain avenues like age verification for watching and prosecuting everyone involved at MindGeek for knowing that this material exists that we definitely should do. Are there not laws already in place that to stop prevent that? Okay, so Are there's a few not? things. One, in these tapes they admit that the government does the investigation and comes up with nothing because of lobbying money and because they know it brings in a lot of revenue. What lobbying money, sorry? What do you mean? So there are certain... Pro-human traffic lobbyists. No. So there's, there's, what is it called? The Free Speech Coalition, which is actually the legal arm of the porn industry. So they use free speech as the pretext of keeping porn open and legal on the internet. But including criminal stuff, though? Surely not. Well, the problem that comes up is that it's basically impossible to disaggregate because even if you do ID verification for the performers, people can use a fake ID. Right. And even if you blur their faces, they won't ID check them. So it could just be someone who's underage or a trafficking victim. So you can never actually verify the consent of a performer if they're in something. So the entire industry is flooded with this kind of material. Okay. Yeah. Right. And so by keeping it up, you're going to inevitably have this kind of stuff on the platform. All right. And so there are many states, especially the sort of like pro-sex work Democrats and various sex positive feminists who have an ideological commitment to sex work being real work. And so it doesn't matter if there are certain people that slip through the cracks, as long as in principle, prostitution is de facto legal. Right. Yeah. So that was, we had that discussion quite a while ago. Things have moved on since. So this is Pornhub's attempted facelift, MindGeek, who we don't really know who runs it quite a lot of the time. They've kept quite a lot of their executives shrouded in the back room. They've hit a few scandals in the last few years because of exactly the kind of material I've already cited. So now they're changing their name to ALO because that's what most companies do when they have a giant scandal. They just change the name and think that all the reputation damage goes away. And the reason that is, and it's cited here, Quote, we wanted a fresh start, so we opted for a name that gave us freedom so that our team and our other new owners could define it how we want, the company said. ALO is also not a word that appears in the dictionary, so it's just made up, so it's kind of hard to associate with anything else. So far, Ethical Capital, who have bought them, the great irony, Ethical Capital, buying a porn giant, has declined to reveal who is currently in charge over at ALO. Bain, who's an executive, said that there are multiple C-suite executives in place, including a chief financial officer and one individual that is the leader of the company. Another major question, such as where Ethical Capital got the money to buy Pornhub, MindGeek, etc., and how much it paid, also remain unanswered. So we don't know how much money and where the money comes from for this giant called Ethical Capital. We also don't know who now owns ALO slash MindGeek. Very shadowy. So well, it's all, all these different companies are privately owned? Yes. But they're also not so at all not, transparent. They're not floated anywhere, so there's not sort of a list of shareholders... It doesn't anywhere. seem it's, so. It's all, it's all in private hands. It seems so, because if no one can have access to it, it's very weird. Yeah. Um, they have promoted... They're registered somewhere, though. You would have thought so. But uh, okay. barely okay. anyone's been capable right. of... Uh, I mean, I've never heard of years. any of these companies before now, so... Uh, well, n thankfully, they've also got a brand new face of the company, right? Very progressive. Okay. They've appointed a woman. So it's all fixed. Great. Long-time employee. Ah, so she's been working there right throughout the scandal. 
Ooh, may, maybe, maybe not the best. Uh, Alexandra Kakezi has been named head of community and brand, a role that will not only oversee the site's creative direction, but will also help craft their stances on key public issues. Ah, yes, because <laughs> I know I should get my moral and political takes from a porn site. MindGeek, and this is why they need to run the PR game to- campaign, teetered on the verge of collapse. This was a couple of years ago now, after a damning New York Times report in December 2020 shed light on the spread of illegal video content that spread via Pornhub and the crisis' effect on impacted victims. It was called The Children of Pornhub. You can only imagine the contents. The report led to Visa and MasterCard stripping the company of access to their payment systems. Um, for their part, and this is what it says in the thing, Pornhub responded by purging millions of videos from the website and requiring all uploaded content to come from verified users. They got rid of something like 80% of their content because they couldn't vi- verify that the people in it were consenting or of age. So that had been viewed presumably well, millions of times. something at least. I mean... Yeah. You'd think that. You'd think the system's watertight. Well, pardon the pardon. Um, then the investigative report came out, and this was with Arden Young, and she went on pretend dates with some of the executives, including Mike Farley, Farley, who's a technical product manager, and he was working on the programming side for years. So he's been at this company for a long time. She's a, a journalist at Sound Investigations. This is one of their first ones. And I'm just going to play a clip from this investigation because Farley actually told the journalists that the senior mar- management is aware of a loophole in the age and consent verification laws and processes over at Pornhub where the company doesn't verify the identities of people who don't show their face. So if you blur your face or you put a mask on or like the camera's cropped, then they don't actually verify who's in it. So that's how they can get around the age verification law. I'm just going to play a clip and let him speak for himself. Why do they just roll with it? Why don't they say something? Because money. It would be counterintuitive to the business. basically don't want to make your company more compliant than it has to be, right? Yeah. Because then it's just wasted money. Like, not only does it cost money to make it compliant, you're reducing the income because of that too. You're spending money on, on making less money. Pornhub allows anyone to upload pornographic videos as long as the person uploading shows an ID, such as a driver's license. However, Farley describes a major loophole. These supposedly verified uploaders can upload videos of people without showing their faces, and Pornhub does not verify these videos contain consenting adults. These uploaders can then monetize these videos to gain a share of Pornhub's ad revenue. Our journalists later asked if abusers actually use this loophole. Who exploits the loophole? Oh, fucking everybody. Everyone. You make a lot of money. So for example, like I could sign up tomorrow I submit my ID, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm putting all my real identification, my bank account and everything, and now I just rip content from other people, where it's like, ah, oh, this guy's like body and his dick look like it could be my, based on my face, I don't know, some shit like that, right? Like, okay, I'm tall, I'm slim, okay, this guy, okay, whatever, he looks kind of similar. I can just rip those videos, upload them as my own, and the people who review my video would probably be like, ah, yeah, this is him in the video. Be like, yeah, it's close enough, and I'll, I'm gonna make thousands of dollars. I didn't do shit. It's just an easy way to, to make money. What's like the worst that could happen with a loophole like that? Including for who? I mean, for us? do you like, no, like, do you rape this? Use it or? Of course. Of course. What about like. Uh-huh. Human traffickers or something? Like, could they use that loophole? To do what? To make money? Of course. Yeah. We've had content partners like... Where's... You can get that. So, just openly admitting that rapists, human traffickers, pedophiles are making thousands off of their platform. And nothing's being done. He's not in prison already. Nobody in MindGeek, who has overseen this policy for years, has been fined, investigated, imprisoned. Not for the last three years since the platform had knowledge that this was going on. Not since they got rid of all that content and instituted a verification process and know that that verification process is inadequate. And they full well know 
that thousands are coming through through ad revenue for the people that are making this stuff non-consensually. They're apathetic as to if a child or a human trafficking victim is on the platform because it brings in money. Right. I mean, this entire thing is just the most sordid, disgusting mm. thing imaginable. Yeah. Um, so just continuing the story, this is summed up on Timcast. Uh, Farley, who is the fella in this video, told his boss, Ramsey Belmaza, that he raised the issue with officers at the company who turned a blind eye to the problem, telling him to shut up. Quote, we brought it to the CPO, it's chief product officer, we brought it to the CLO, chief legal officer, and they're both telling us it's all good. The CPO is telling us like, F off, it's all good, stop, like shut up. Farley said before adding the company's actions would be indefensible in court. So the chief's legal officer is saying, yeah, we've got to be careful here, guys. The chief product officer who's saying we would lose a lot of money is dismissing his concerns about this. So he's just holding his tongue while knowing that all of this content is on the platform. And a broader point as well. Now, Bo, as a gentleman, you've been on many dates with girls. You've never said anything like this thinking they'd like you, have you? Because you've never done this because you're a normal person, but you also have a degree of just general decorum as to not make an embarrassment of yourself. That was one thing I was thinking when I was looking at that, that, those clips there. Um, that's just a, if you're supposed to be on a date or a first date or even a second or third or fourth date, it's pretty weird, weird stuff to be talking about. Mm. Sort of, I mean, even if it's well known to both of them that what he does. Still, like, uh, you know, dates should be sort of lighthearted and funny and stuff and interesting and not talking about human trafficking. Yeah. Like, if I was ever on a date or have been on dates where sort of the topic turned dark, you try and steer it round sort of immediately, right? You wouldn't just start talking about, I, I don't know, it seemed weird. I felt like he, I don't know why, but I just felt like he sort of knew maybe on some level. He did one point ask, what, do you work for the government or something? She right. Just asking, she said no. He went on multiple dates with her as well. He And she said in an interview, she exclusively gave to Stephen Crowder, that at the end of the date, he asked her to come back to his apartment. Because nothing gets a girl gushing he like did, talking about child molestation. He did also look a little, not that that's much, but he did look a little bit uncomfortable sort of admitting to it. And if he had asked... Uh, seniors about it mm. seems to be ever so slightly less evil than all the other people around him. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is just this is just pure pure evil, really. Yep. I mean, because um, I guess I would agree with Josh. There's some sort of horrible and dark things that humans do that will just be sort of impossible to ever stamp out, like prostitution, like fighting, like pornography, uh, all sorts of things. Um, it would be sort of impossible every time it's tried to be stamped out entirely. There will just become an underground illegal version of it. Uh, but saying that, there's just no, obviously there's no... So there, what I'm trying to say is there will always be a market, probably a big market for pornography. Okay, but if there's sort of actual rapes and trafficking and paedophile stuff and whatever, then yeah, point, it, seems an, it seems an abomination that the state isn't involved, uh, the, 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 uh, the police aren't involved heavily hmm. in trying to do something about it. Yeah, because yeah, that, that seems like an abomination. To isn't me. the legal market just indistinguishable from the illegal market if they're both comfortable with those kinds of things going on? But the least you can do is crack down on the purveyors that know this disgusting abuse is happening and still profit from it. Oh, yeah. That just seems perfectly sensible to me. But There's also this thing, isn't there, of when does a platform become responsible for what's on it. So, you know, for example, a telephone company yeah. isn't responsible for every call that's made, even yeah. criminal calls. But if you're selling uh, sex as the item and you know that right. and you know that you are advertising on videos of children, right. uh, no, yeah, you're yeah, definitely yeah. responsible. Let me finish my point. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So but then there's, you know, so it's like is YouTube, for example, responsible for everything that's that's on it? Um well it, it's sort of up to I don't know if it is up to the platform, but um, nevertheless, if you are going to be responsible for it, then be responsible for it. Mm. Then, If you know about it and don't remove it, then you're um, responsible. Because Instagram yeah. had a scandal a little while ago that the Washington, the Wall Street Journal found, where Instagram knew that certain hashtags were directing people towards the sale of children and child exploitation material. And do you know what they did? They put a warning saying, we know these hashtags might lead you to this content. Would you like to continue? So rather than removing the accounts... Yeah. 
They just knew it was going on and put, are you sure? (laughs) That means Instagram is complicit. When Elon bought Twitter. Yeah, he got rid of loads. Did he? Yeah, did he not? Was it not the case that he was able to just sort of. He got rid of absolute tons of it. Yeah, so it's almost like if you actually cared, you could get rid of it. Whereas the guy before that was on the trust and safety team did write a PhD thesis on why teenagers should be allowed on Grindr. Really? Yeah. (laughs) But I'm sure. Yeah. He just didn't get round to getting rid of it. Um, the interesting thing that happened was the video was actually removed and her account was removed briefly. Okay. Well, is this the undercover journalist? Lady? Yes. Fascinating. Removed so, from where? By who? To, Twitter. Oh, really? Video was removed by Twitter. There was a privacy complaint. Now, it's since been put back up. Okay. But who and how much power do these companies have to lobby Twitter's trust and safety team supposedly under the guidance of Elon, but obviously he can't be everywhere all at once, to remove a perfectly legitimate investigative report that isn't deceptively edited. What? Why do they have that? Oh, if they're admitting to criminal things, shouldn't they be the ones being investigated rather than the journalists themselves being mm. taken off? Mm. Again, there's a lot of interference being run here. So it also happens that Sound Investigations, the actual account that, that posted it, um, has been was locked out briefly when she got her account back. So... They're just trying to run damage control here. And then they released another one. And it's not, we're not going to play a, a clip from, from this one. But she also went on a date with one of the lead script writers. So it's more than one person at the company in senior positions admitting that this goes on. And he said that it's actually impossible to buy lots of, uh, verify lots of the videos as well because lots of them are being uploaded from outside America, like Eastern Europe and Asia and the like. And they have different verification systems and different ages of consent. So if you upload fake IDs or different IDs from different countries that aren't the same as an American ID, then they can't really police it. So they just sort of shrug their shoulders and allow this material to exist. So, And the system also can't spot fake IDs. So if you allow like consumer side, uh, sorry, uh, performer side verification, it's basically impossible to ever verify if it was made consensually. That's just horrible. So is there even a way to have the supposed consensual industry at all? If you can't verify it well, as a that consumer, was, that was also one of the things I was thinking. Is that um, I don't because I, I, you know, I'm not technical on the side of what can or can't be done on the internet on huge platforms, how it works technically. Hmm. But it's sort of a horrible thing to realise. But maybe it is impossible to. There'll always be like criminal freaks out there filming what they're doing and uploading it somewhere. I mean, not that that excuses. MindGeek or Pornhub or whatever it is. I'm not saying that. No. But um, there could at least be perhaps some title legislation and the police actually doing something about yes. it. I mean, at, at least. That's just reasonable. At least that. Yeah. So what, what, why aren't they? How, how much money is keeping said laws at bay? That's, well, that's a good mind. question. There's, <laughs> at least in America. Yes. Um, they turn a blind eye to all sorts of things of which there's lots of evidence. Mm. Need we mention... Um, a certain Hunter. Oh yeah, Hunter Biden. Yeah, I mean it's just evidence. Right? I was, I was just, it's I was just evidence, thinking the mysterious but... camera failures at Jeffrey Epstein's suicide. Oh right, for okay, yeah, right, yeah. yeah it's just, just very, just, very like, strange. The right? FBI just sort of say there's nothing to see here. Yes, quite a lot. Yep. They just decide very quickly that there will be no prosecution on certain things, hmm. and well, of course that's deliberate, isn't it? Of course. Well, and what's interesting here is actually the, the Farley fella who was in the first video. Um, he was asked directly on the date about the case of a 14-year-old girl that was brought up in that 2020 article in the New York Times who was raped. Years later, she had to keep contacting the website because people would keep re-uploading the video. And he said that we that the executives knew the video was up and just allowed it to be up and dragged their feet on removing it. And then he went on to blame her and said, quote, I can see both sides. Like, if you don't want the video out there, don't do that. It's like, it's a 14-year-old girl. What is wrong? I mean, what a surprise that people spend their career in the porn industry are, yeah. have, have no moral compass. Yeah. That's a surprise. Yeah. The same with the Project Veritas investigation of Pfizer, the executive that went on a date and kept admitting that they had a, um, a program which was trying to make viruses worse in order to create really efficient vaccines for them. And it would never, ever, ever leak out, of course. There's something that must be burdening the consciences of those people <laughs> in compromised industries to just spill your guts to the first person right. that shows you any attention. Yeah, But it's like, what a disgusting person you are then, <laughs> as well. 
You're yeah. not just a cog in a machine. You're you're part of this. You're aiding and abetting it. You're morally so, bankrupt. Yeah. Exactly. So there are lawsuits that have come out against against this. Um, Layla Micklewaite, who's the founder of Trafficking Hub, she was involved in that original uh, New York Times article as well. She details how and this is the full document that you can read for yourself for the for the legal filing. But this is Kirsty Althaus, and she's suing Pornhub, MindGeek, and uh, profiting for, for profiting from a partner organization called Girls Do Porn because they failed to verify the consent of the girls, such as herself, who were trafficked using blackmail drugs and physical violence. Bear in mind that the head, the owner of Girls Do Porn, has already been arrested, a guy called Michael Pratt. Um, he's been convicted of sex trafficking and was on the FBI's most wanted list. This was one of the partners of the website that was affiliated, generating loads of revenue for them, and it was just a human trafficking operation with a camera in the room. Um, MindGeek continued to advertise Girls Do Porn on their platforms, despite receiving multiple tips from victims that the content that they were coerced into making depicted them doing non-consensual sex acts. Quote, even after federal law enforcement seized and shut down Girls Do Porn in October 2019, MindGeek continued hosting, distributing, and advertising the unlawful content, including the sex trafficking videos of the plaintiff. So, even after the founder was arrested and the investigation was ongoing, they were like, no, we'll monetize and promote this stuff just so they can make money off of it. Again, always ask the question, if there is so much money to be made here, why is it always free? Why do they want it to be free as well? Like, what is it doing to the consumer? Like, what, if you're getting it for free, don't think everything is free. I think you might be paying your soul a little bit here as well. <laughs> just, just a Perhaps. touch. You know? there, there are plenty of other alleged stories going on as well that you can follow on Layla's account. Um, she's just been collating loads of examples of this. There's the 14 year old girl the in question. Is, like, um, not that what I'm about to say is even an attempt to excuse any of no. this. It's not. But people will do anything for money. Or it's not everyone, some people. Some people. It doesn't matter. You know, like people that work for uh, arms companies or people that design more efficient forms of cluster bombs or something. You know. They know that what they're doing is 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 terrible. It causes it causes human misery on a, on a fantastic scale, but it doesn't matter to them at all. Um, there there will always be people like that, millions of them. Um, again, this, that's not to excuse anything. No, you just have to build larger prisons. I'm just saying when you've got all right, when you've got a world of billions of people, you'll have people that are on. Uh, at every point along the spectrum of of, of morality or ethics, mm. um, and there will always be quite a lot that are at the sort of darker end of it. You know, it's not just porn. There's loads of things in yeah. the world you can do, which cause misery mm. um, and and suffering, and is depraved. Mm. Um, but yeah, it would be nice to see it policed a bit better. Yeah, I just don't think governments should allow an industry to exist to make that really profitable. It just yeah. it, it doesn't add up to me unless some people are getting a kickback. So I just thought I'd finish with a couple of updates. Since this investigation, uh, Miriam Cates decided to get up in Parliament right before the online safety bill passed and add an amendment saying that, much like in the States, porn websites need to verify the age of their user because if it's an adult product, then just like if you're buying alcohol or in the States, firearms online, you should probably put in like a passport or a driving license or something like that. Now, I hate the online safety bill. I think this is the wrong vehicle to use it. I don't want to legitimate any of it because it would put Ofcom in charge of our business and try and crack down on dissent. Again, as we've seen recently with the Department of Digital Media, Culture and Sport trying to crack down the likes of GB News and Rumble under the pretext of this passing. But in isolation, this piece of legislation that says children should not be able to access porn sites and they should also not be featuring in it, mind geek, seems like a sensible move forward. Mm. That would just be as with any other adult product. And there's going to be people concerned about, obviously, governments saying that they need to verify their ID um, because it will be a slippery slope towards a digital ID. Well, you, didn't, you don't have to create an entire digital ID bureaucracy. I know they want to try to do that, but in a sensible and sane society, you wouldn't have to do that as well. So I just think it's simply reasonable. Unfortunately, one of the Texas judges didn't. So there have been a spate of, art, um, of legislation that have come out in the States because Weirdly enough, this was started by Billie Eilish, of all people. So What was, sorry? The, uh, the age verification laws in America that are similar to what Miriam Cates has tried to pass. Various Republican states have turned around and said, you have to have verification um, on the side of the supplier. So the government isn't doing the verification system. The supplier has to foot the bill for data processing, data collection, and the like. 
so that children can't access these websites. And funnily enough, it came from Billy Eilish going on Howard Stern's show and saying, porn ruined my brain. And some Louisiana senator, Republican senator, because she watched him when she was like 10, so she now can't have a normal oh, relationship. Okay. Uh, some Louisiana state level senator decided to draft legislation that said we need age verification. What's happened is there's now upwards of 10 states that have done this. And the response by MindGeek and Pornhub, because children can't watch their stuff anymore, wasn't to the age verification. They've blocked it in those states because they've taken the calculation that obviously without all of that site traffic, it won't be as profitable. So they've already factored in that loads of children need to watch our stuff to keep our business afloat, which is really gross. The final update I've got is that Texas judge has blocked it on constitutional grounds. This is raising my what, eyebrow. What? Oh, age verification, age verification okay. law. Yeah. On what grounds, sorry? Constitutional grounds. So there's a constitutional right for kids to have access to porn, apparently. This is what I'm. This is what you were hinting at earlier. Of like, why don't they enforce the law? What's going on here? Why? Why would they not just do this? It's either a mind virus or there's lobbying money at play. But this is U.S. District Judge David Allen Ezra, and he granted a preliminary injunction blocking HB 1181. And this is the newly passed age verification law a day before it went into effect. Pornhub, alongside several other pornography sites and the Free Speech Coalition, that lobbying body I mentioned earlier, filed a suit against Texas on August the 11th, alleging the law violated several constitutional rights, including those guaranteed by the First Amendment. HB 1181 would allow Texas Attorney General to sue adult posting content websites for more than $3 million a year if they don't verify the user ages with a government-issued ID before giving them access. So this Texas judge thinks for some reason, it's really important that the porn industry can show their stuff to kids, even though they know that there are children in those videos. Right. Again, um, one, sex acts aren't speech, because even under the First Amendment, if you decide to shag someone in the middle of Times Square, you will be arrested, but you won't be arrested if you're shouting. It depends on what you're shouting these days, I suppose. Um, I don't want a surveillance state either. Neither do you, because we're sensible Englishmen and we don't want Big Brother watching us all the time. But we have age verification on all other adult products. We at least purport to be against sex trafficking in this society, but it doesn't seem to be cracked down on nearly as much as it should, especially not across borders. And so I don't understand why the police aren't enforcing the law here, why these companies aren't like the uh, JFK once said of the FBI, broken up into a thousand pieces and scattered into the winds, and why certain judges in Texas aren't enforcing legislation that would keep this out of the hands of kids. I wonder, it's gross it's, and weird. It's interesting that they went with the First Amendment thing. I, I wonder if Judge Ezra can point to anything in the Federalist Papers to back that up. I wonder if Judge Ezra can uh, point to anything in the, in the surviving letters or correspondence of Jefferson or Adams that talked about yeah, your, your, your right to... Your pedal kiddie pool. Yeah, your, your positive right to be a voyeur on other people having sex on the internet. Again, relatively new thing, not very good. Profiting off of the suffering of children and traffic women. Um, destroy yes, it. Gross, yes, really gross. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium contents on the site such as the premium articles, this one on the SMP's failing war on biological reality, with an audio track for silver and gold tiers. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you, and goodbye.